Hey guys, believe it or not, California is starting to open back up. You're seeing people without masks. You're seeing people actually living in life. It is opening up and it's late June. And I do something late June every year. And that is get ready for the county fair because you enter your stuff in July and I win in August. That sounds pretty confident, right? Well, guess what? I have a reason to. Oh, wow. Sometimes I underestimate my own weakness. Yeah, there's there's even more. I can't, I can't even keep track. Look, I would have to take Miss Largent's calculonometry class to figure out how many ribbons I've won thus far. Anyway. Oh, yeah, here's another first place. Uh, viewer's choice yeah you guys know what that is i mean you're looking at me all the time right yeah a lot of other people agree with you anyway where was i oh craft okay so my kids went out and looted some poor luthier he's not really poor uh anyway they looted his place and found a bunch of stuff and they brought it home and dared me to make an award-winning craft out of it and since i won't be winning ribbons this year because they delayed the fair till next year because there wasn't time enough to get ready i don't know how long it takes to get ready to hand me a ribbon like year after year there's continuity to that but i guess they need to have some time anyway let's take a look at what i got for father's day to make some craft that I'm going to win a ribbon with. Look at these. These are giant violin tuner, tuning machine thingies. That's what they are. And they also got me these giant tuning pegs. Now, why do I have them in here? In the View Arama, the Chick Flick Teal View Tainer. It's a View Tainer. It's not a Butainer, it's a View Tainer. But you see, it's a Chick Flick Teal view tainer kind of anyway they're in here believe me i have them in here so you don't try and touch them you do not touch my stuff you're coveting touching coveting and touching leads to well theft at minimum okay so here's what we're going to do i'm going to need some relic wood we are going to go to a place and get some relic wood and then we're going to take all this scrap apparatus and build something that is worthy of this and I'm sharing it this year because face it for once no one is going to lose to me so hey we're going to get on the craft bus the craft bus and you're going to pay close attention and I'm going to drive you to a first place ribbon of your own next year Trust me, the grandma crafters are going to hate you like they hate me. Let's go get some relic wood. All right, we're back. We got relic wood. And we stopped and got some mahogany. Mahogany from a place right down the road from where we got the scrap wood. It's a secret place, name unknown, but yet cultural capital of the world. So let's start cutting this stuff up as soon as I'm done with my work out here into very specific pieces. And we're going to make something that's going to leave you completely and utterly dismayed. Let's go to the bench.
Okay, so now that we've got the Italian groove basically cut off, we're not going to worry about all these holes and marks and bugs and all that in here, but we are going to have a drop down here where the upper portion comes up. I'm going to leave a little bit of left over here because we're going to have to trim. This stuff is going to end up being planed down is what's going to happen. So I'm just going to kind of give myself a mark there. And then this one, we're going to glue on to here like so. And then once this is glued together, we're going to 45 the end of it about right here. Okay, we're going to use trusty old tight bond here. We're not going to be shy. And because we plane this, it's going to the surfaces are going to match up nice and I don't care about this stuff being tore up from the floor up but we got a piece here that's about ready to break off so um, we're going to put that down like so and we're going to match this up to this line and again I don't care if the clamp if the edges line up because we're going to run this part planer so now we're just going to clamp it up. And it's very hot out, so it's going to be okay. And it'll dry up fast. All right, there we go. Okay, now we need to slow down a little bit because this is going to get a little bit tricky. We're going to end up, end up planing these edges off to where everything is about this wide, like so. Because this drop-down section right here, where is our chick flick tail pointer? Right there. 45 is going to be over here somewhere. This drop-down section is going to take this piece right here like so there's going to be this big piece of mahogany behind this this is going to be the face of something so this will sit about right here I'm going to glue this stuff a little bit long like so so you see that and then this thinner piece of mahogany is going to center up here like so that needs to sit right there and then I need to come up I want the tuning pegs to stick out this way and this is going to have to be about a half inch off of the bottom. So I want a half inch between, here we can do it like this, between here and right there. And then this will sit up here like so. So we'll make a couple of marks right there. Put that one there. It's going to hang out a little bit more. We'll put that one there. There we go. And again, we'll use our friend Tight Bond to put these three pieces together. With those little marks, I'll know where everything goes. And I have a little bit of overhang because when we start playing in this stuff, we're going to lose a little bit. So I'd rather have things be a tad bit long then short so we'll flip this one over try to center it up move that around a little bit again we're going to be cutting off the edges some like so we got that mark right there like so all right there we go I'm going to put another clamp up here while it's drying up, but um, you really have to pay attention to this now as to what's going to be where. This is actually going to flip around and stand up, meaning that these tuner pegs are going to need to be over there. They're also going to have to be about a half inch off the bottom, like so, and I'll line this up to where it's kind of centered. And they need to stick off the edge of the board because it will be cool to turn them. So, 
I'm going to take my pencil and mark off circles right there and we're going to drill through all this wood to make sure that these we'll use a Forstner bit same size as this a little bit bigger anyway we're going to put mark those off there and drill down so this sits flush with here wouldn't you just love to help me all right the glue is dried up now and we're going to take this out and plane it down flat and get ready to put our mystery piece right here all right almost forgot um, we know that this is going to end up being about this wide. So, while we're planing this down, I'm going to make a couple marks here. I don't want to go within about a quarter inch of that till the end. Anyway, when we're planing, we can get this down to there as long as those marks don't disappear. Okay, now the upright has dried. We're going to have to cut this off. So the other piece comes over here that 45's down. But I have cut this down on a bandsaw very close to where, remember, our width is going to be here. So our tuning machines will be a half inch off the bottom. I still have to cut this off right here so once I know it seats but I'm gonna run through this this through the planer really quick and get rid of these edges and make sure that they match up here we don't worry about this kind of stuff it's gonna look cool and we're done you know me it always does anyway off to the planer All right, we have the upright planed off where it's smooth everywhere. And so now this, once we get this cut down, right, we're gonna end up cutting that off. That's gonna sit there. And of course, this mysteriously matches this. So we're gonna end up having to do like so. So we're gonna end up cutting off here and here some that will sit there like this but the most important thing now is these have to be the same width so i'm going to set this up here and we're going to plane off a little bit we got it close before we're just going to make that mark over here and over here so these things are the same width I will tell you what, I love that planer. All right, there we go. Everything's lining up good there. See that? Everything's nice and flat, no gaps. Now all we have to do is 95, or 45 this 95. 45 it's 95 millimeters is what's wrong hey metric hater i know you love that see that centimeters that's right bob ross says it's cool so it's freaking cool any questions yeah i thought not all right look at that you know what else you're gonna want to look at that Right about here, right about now, that's right. All right, now, these tuning pegs need to stick out just a little bit. I want to center that up a tad if we can, but bring this over like so. That'll work right there. So I'm gonna draw a circle right here. And one right here like so. We're going to center those up like that. Now, we're going to take a Forstner bit 
and we're going to sink that in because these now you understand why that wood is so thick there we go okay so we're going to use this forstner bit and we're going to want to go down about as deep as so there's our depth gauge All right, now I'm going to flush this off up here, right here, and then let's get back down here. I am going to put a couple of dowels in right here and glue this all up. All right, we're at this step down. I'll make it real easy for you metricators. I'm going to come in about three quarters of an inch off the bottom, like so. And then I'm going to come an inch off of the side, like so. And like so. Then I'll drill two holes right there after I set this on here, like so. Alright, let's pull the clamps off of this now. You know what, I should actually put them away before moving on. Wouldn't that be a novel idea? Anyway, our next step is going to be to stand this up. And we are going to come down about exactly this far. And make a line here about an inch in. And how will we know it's an inch in? Well, we have this fancy little scrap apparatus that tells us it's right there. And right there. Oh, I made a mistake. Call that the first time. Anyway, so now to take this mega large size bit here there we go okay we took these chick flick teal skizzers and squared this end off because now we're having to mask over the mahogany part of this project You're asking yourself why? Well, guess what? You are on a need-to-know basis. And Georgie told me, don't tell a lie. Just prolong them to uh, rile up the suspense. Anyway, so you're on a need-to-know basis. You don't need to know just yet. But we are going to mask off, carefully mask off the mahogany section. And that line needs to be straight. Hold that line, soldier. Alrighty then, there we go. Last one now. Now it gets into the artisan artistry part of the show. Pay close attention to the obtuse and divisive, diversive and deceptive explanation I'm about to give you. You are going to need Chick Flick Teal. We're going to need chalk paint. You're going to put antiquing glaze over the chalk paint. Not like this. Like this. And then finally, you're going to need some premium 
you know what it goes without saying anything to do with me is premium but don't get lost premium clear finish I'm going to give you a very detailed explanation now of the technique I use in these products here watch carefully Time has come. I don't think you are going to believe what you're going to see. So let's get the housekeeping out of the way before you get completely derailed and sidetracked and go running off trying to find some of your own giant violin tuner thingies for yourself to do this project. You're going to give me a like. You're going to subscribe if you haven't. You cannot attempt to beat me at the county fair if you don't know what I'm doing. You have to know your competition. So, this is going to be so cool that you're not going to know what it is to the point where somebody's going to have to tell you what it is. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Vutainer. Now, are you ready? Do you think they're ready? I don't know. Okay, let's unveil this thing all right you ready oh yeah you can bet it's going to be a winner all right it's such a winner people in winter south dakota are going to covet this here we go drum roll oh, them tuners look familiar look at that go ahead Ooh ah yeah they're bookends what are these for well just in case the book you're reading like this one right here Bull Weevil Blues, the politics of the blue of the bull weevil in the development of agriculture in the southern United States. Got a little bit in there about music. That's there, but you see you can put the book you're reading right in there. Or if you're doing a recipe and cooking something, you can prop it up like there and use it in the kitchen. You can use this for just about anything except that anyway we think yeah that's a winner all right you're welcome okay let's have a closer look at what's in here first off oh this is a real prize dallas blues heart a wand wand publishing company 1912 this is an original copy of what is the first sheet music for what is known to be the 12 bar blues come out of Oklahoma can you believe that let's go over here to the next one steel string guitar construction probably not that exciting right well wrong when you get in the back there's an article in here De Quisto makes an arch top guitar. This six or eight pages is what Ken Parker credits the basis of his guitars. Do you know who Ken Parker is? Well, you should go right up there right about now and hear his lecture on the evolution of the arch top guitar. What else we got? Oh, got to have this. A complete what is known to be model numbers, production dates, and codes for K archtop guitars. We've got a bunch of Alan Lomax stuff, including Land Where Blues Began. This was about 20 years in the making. Got some blues stuff here. William Ferris is a professor. I want you to pay attention to Ann and Samuel Charters, The Country Blues. This is a book club edition of a couple years after the 1959 original edition. 
Sam Charters, The Roots of the Blues. But I would have to say, if you want to know about the blues, you're going to figure out who Samuel Charters is. Now, look at this one. George Mitchell, 1967. If you look at the cover of this one, that's Mississippi Joe Calicott. And I got a hold of George Mitchell a couple of times, including I wanted a copy off of his printer of the cover shot of this. You see that guitar? You see that harmony right there? That guitar looks almost identical to this guitar. Check that out. Do not covet that. Anyway, thank you, George Mitchell. Let me get this back in here so I don't lose it. You'll just have to bear with me. Coveters can't be choosers. There we go. Put that back in there like this. Okay, now we're going to get into a section that I really like and you've heard me talk a lot about. Let's make sure that that's in the right, right spot there. We start picking up on David Evans here. Um, and Dick Waterman, uh, these are people that found Sun House, um, interviewed Sun House, took pictures of Sun House. There is a transcript here, courtesy of David Evans, of the interview he did. He, he sent me an email and told me all about it, where John Fahey himself and... Alan Wilson of Canned Heat interviewed Sun House. That interview led everybody to Reuben Lacey, and you've heard me talk about Reuben Lacey and how Sun House used to trash him. This is some words to an album that Reuben Lacey did later on when he was a preacher. Um, Nothing But the Blues is a series of blues articles. This one in here has quite a, a bunch of information about Rube Lacey, Reuben Lacey, and uh, how they found him after they talked to Sun House. We got some Sun House books. We've got Blind Owl Blues, which is a story about Alan Wilson. Alan Wilson was the one that helped Sun House relearn his stuff to go back on tour. Um, We've got Charlie Patton, we've got um, and C. Anderson, her book, Brother Robert. Uh, we've got some good stuff in here. Look at this. The Unicorn Coffee House, that is where everybody would start off before going to the Gaslight in San Francisco. Uh, but Sun House played here uh, early in his career. So anyway, I got a ton of blues books. This is just a portion of them, but these are the ones that I think are really cool. And then again, of course, whatever you're reading, the way these are built, you can just pop the book you're reading on the end right here like that and leave it sit there. So I'm pretty happy with this and I think it's pretty practical. There's a lot of history there. And uh, yeah, this wood and these tuners and tuning pegs they got a lot of history behind them too. So thanks for everybody that helped me with this project and gave me materials. I appreciate your attention. You can tell I'm into history because without the history, there is none of the blues we like. So see you next time.